So there's always a lot of questions around the idea of stockpiling ammunition for an SHTF event. Yet, there is one mistake that a lot of people make based on some of the early information they access when trying to figure out exactly what they should be doing. Hey everybody, it's Magic Prepper. And today we're talking about one mistake that you can avoid making when it comes to stockpiling ammunition for SHTF. There's a lot of questions circulating around that exact topic. How much ammo is enough ammo for SHTF? What type of ammo should I store? What's the bare minimum? How should I store it? And those are all topics I've covered on this channel in the past. But there's one mistake that a lot of people tend to make early on, which could be detrimental to you in the future, especially during an SHTF scenario, especially regarding stockpiling ammunition and the inventory that you keep on hand. But first, if you've ever accidentally fallen in love with a caliber that you added to your collection on accident and then found out it was probably more expensive than you really bargained for, then hit the subscribe button below because you might see some 300 blackout here on the table and there might be some supersonics and subsonics as well and everything right here in front of you is costing me a little bit too much money. But We've all been there and we've all done that and that MCX over there at 300 Blackout demands to be fed. So what do you do? But this mistake is something that's common because one of the things people try to figure out very early on is how much ammo is enough? What should I be shooting for? And in my video about that topic, I talked about how having a thousand rounds of the calibers you consider necessary in your inventory would be a good target to shoot for. So maybe if you're somebody who's basic in, in the United States, that might mean 5.56, 7.62 NATO, 9 millimeter and 45 ACP, right? So if you have those four calibers, having a thousand rounds of each gives you diversity, it gives you options, and if one platform has a breakage or something like that, you can move to another and still have a complete loadout, let's just call it. So that is exactly what I was trying to convey in that video. But the thing that I didn't mention and what you don't hear a lot of people mention and which causes problems when people are trying to figure out what they should be doing is to once you get to a baseline, then fully investing in your go-to calibers and overstocking the calibers that you are going to run when it comes to training, when it comes to actual self-defense use, when it comes to any activity with your main go-to rifle and your main go-to pistol. And it may be rifles and pistols if they're chambered in the same caliber. But for what you see right here, having a lot of 300 blackout on hand would be a great idea. However, is that my go-to rifle? Well, that's for you to decide. And this is in fact a pistol, so what do you do? But think of it like this. So you've got those four calibers I mentioned before. You've got a thousand rounds of each. Great. Now, if you over diversify and you try to have a lot of other stuff in the mix, 357 Magnum, 380, maybe you add in a 338 Lapua, whatever it is, and you try to get to that baseline for each of those calibers, you find yourself at a thousand of this, a thousand of this, a thousand of this, and let's just say you have seven different calibers on hand. Now you have 7,000 rounds, but only 1,000 of each caliber. And in reality, what would serve you better would be to have 7,000 rounds of ammo, but probably 4,000 of it in 5.56, let's just say, and 2,000 of it in 9 millimeter, and then the rest can share the last thousand, and you'll still be plenty well off, and you'll have the actual amount of ammo you need to go out and get some proper training and really get comfortable with your rifle and your pistol. And so that's something that a lot of people need to do better at. And it's something that I need to do better at as well. And then the more you diversify, the more difficult that whole situation becomes. AKA, let's say, for for example, you decide to run a 300 blackout. Well, I've got these Lancer mags, the opaque ones have the supersonic loads in them, and the translucent ones have the subsonic loads in them. Great, I wanted a dedicated suppressed platform that I could shoot regularly and train with, but even this one caliber demands having two different types of ammunition on hand based on situation. So. Keep all of that in mind when you're stockpiling ammunition because the biggest thing you need to keep in mind is what is going to be your go-to. If your go-to calibers are standard issue, let's just say, for example, 5.56 by 45 NATO and 9 millimeter NATO or 9 millimeter Luger, whatever you want to call it, well, those two should have much bigger numbers than everything else in your collection. And of course, 
you can have a baseline for everything, which makes sense, right? Unless it's an absurd number. And even when it is an absurd number, you're still wrong by not prioritizing your go-to calibers. So even if you have 10,000 rounds of every single type of ammunition you have on hand, and let's say you have 10 of them, right? But you have 10,000 rounds of every type of ammo. You're really well set. You're good to go. You'd still be better off of having 50,000 rounds of 5.56, 30,000 rounds in 9mm, and splitting the difference with everything else with those leftover 20,000 rounds. And that's probably even being generous. In fact, I would say those numbers should be skewed even further. But this was something I wanted to share with you all because that is a mistake that a lot of people make early on is that they get into the mindset of trying to stock up every caliber they have, which I would say shrink down your inventory, only have certain calibers on hand, especially the ones that are gonna be functional and practical. And when it comes to something specified like 300 blackout, well, there might be a place for it based on what it is you're trying to accomplish, but keep things pretty tight. And then when it comes to choosing your go-to calibers, make sure you have a lot more of those than everything else. Because having that baseline for everything, sure, it's a good thing to have, and I definitely think it's something everyone should do. But don't sell yourself short and try to make everything grow at the same time as everything else. Make sure you have more investment and more round count when it comes to those go-to calibers. That's what it is you need to be doing because really at the end of the day, you need to go out and get training. You need to learn how to use your rifles and your pistols properly. And you should probably do what it is that I'm gonna be doing here for quite some time now and limit yourself to one singular rifle and maybe a couple pistols depending on concealed carry and maybe duty quality pistol and Cut it at that until you're a master at those platforms and then move on from there. Because there's one thing that I've learned over the years that I would say is a mistake made by me, which is trying to learn too many different rifle platforms, too many different styles of handguns, and not mastering any one particular one in the process. And that is a mistake I've made that I'm sharing with you so that you can be better off in the long run. Hopefully this video gave you something to think about. Hopefully this isn't a mistake you actually made, but if it is, at least now you know you're not alone and that you can start working on maybe you know crunching things down a little bit more and really focusing on the ammunition that matters without anything else to say about it that's going to be it for magic prepper